<laughs> Welcome back to Deconstructing Damsels. Today's episode is just going to be me, no guests. That is because I read something that I was not expecting, and I did not plan ahead for that. So, March has been Magic Month, and it's not just on the podcast, it's also with what I've been reading and such, and so I've got a few things to talk about, including the book of the episode, which is Fury Rising by Barbara Anino. Uh, it's on Kindle Unlimited, and that's why I grabbed it, which, score, <laughs> I love a mythology retelling, especially if it's something that's maybe not as well known. I'm all about it. So I'm going to talk about that, but first I want to say thank you to my patrons, Carrie, the Elm Sisters, Kelly from Movies and Newbies, and Marlena. Thank you guys so much. You, it seriously helps. Oh. And don't forget to find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash damselspodcast to get exclusive bonus content, to support the Patreon. If there is another service that you guys use that you think I should be using, please let me know. Email damselspodcast at gmail.com because I'm going to start joining Scribd? Scribd? Oh. I'm going to start joining it and... It's going to be great because I'll have more books and more audio and it'll just be very helpful since I also have Kindle Unlimited right now. So more options, more guests, everything. Speaking of which, I am planning the May, June, and July episodes. If you would like to be on the show, please, please, please contact me at damselspodcast at gmail.com. I don't have everything fixed out. I do know that... For June, I'm going to talk about A Low Country Bride. I think that's going to be fun. I've been really excited to wait for it because I grew up in break, on vacations and breaks in South Carolina. So I love the Low Country. To me, that's like a second home. Can't wait. That's June. So June is pretty much covered because I also have another episode I recorded previously. But May is science and nature and that kind of thing and then july is summer those are the themes we'll get there april <laughs> because i skipped it is cinderella month so i'm just gonna be talking about a lot about cinderella it kind of like flowed from magic to cinderella right i also want to talk about you know ever after so question since this is gonna be like a month from now or maybe a little bit more do you guys want to like talk about it on discord or youtube like Streamyard. if it's Streamyard, i think i can have like four people if it's on discord i don't know because my husband will have to set up that whole server thing because i don't know that's beyond my means i'm i have to use his computer as well because my laptop does not like discord get back to me again you know this will be on youtube leave the comments there you are feel free to leave the comments on twitter at damsel's podcast Facebook, Damsel's Podcast site as well. Well, page, I guess. Um, there's also a Challenging Damsels, which is my reading prompt thing, <laughs> my reading challenge, I guess, that will be available. It is at Challenging Damsels. It's just a Facebook group. It's literally just for that because I have, I look, I have a very limited amount of, of brain power when it comes to moderating, and that's about it. Join in, talk about books. I'm trying to get a little bit more content for you guys that maybe not be expected all the time. Hence the lives. Oh, speaking of that, so I have a YouTube channel. You guys should keep an eye on it because I have my unboxing videos, hauling. I don't really know what to call it since I bought it in a great big like group. I didn't specifically like buy them individually. I'm also going to have, again, if we do the, <laughs> the YouTube version, we'll be doing it on for Ever After. It'll be on there, as well as on here, but maybe easier to watch because you can kind of keep an eye on who's speaking. I don't know. We'll see on that one. But I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to make like more content for you guys and find better ones. Well, not better, but more interactive ways. <laughs> we'll put it that way. I'm trying to be more interactive with you guys. Uh, there's also the Instagram, which is on Damsel's Podcast, because everything is literally Damsel's Podcast. There's also going to be at least three new reviews within 
March and early April. So if you guys want to check those out, I've got a few arcs and I've got a few books that I read. I may even put the full review for Fury Rising. I mean, we've got this episode, but it's always good to have, you know, things that you don't have to listen to. You can just see how I feel. I do the mini reviews on Instagram and I do the other ones on the podcast, which is damselspodcast.com because I'm a simple, simple creature and it's so much easier for marketing, guys. I think that's all the housekeeping because I'm going to talk about a few more books after I talk about Fury Rising, which is also called Sin City Goddess. So if you read it, it's the same book, apparently. I don't know. I just I read it because it was on Kindle and it was about a fury. Kind of followed my theme of I was in a mood, so I mooded on over. Wasn't really necessarily going to be the book I was going to talk about yet, <laughs> but life. So. Let's head on over there and we'll talk about the book for a minute and then after that I'll do some more talking about other books and what I'm reading because I'm figuring you guys may be kind of curious since I'm kind of keeping a theme this month for the most part. Not all of it, but mostly. Let's go. Hi guys. So as you can see, we're back. (laughs) Okay, so I read Fury Rising which is about a fury in Las Vegas. And it's this weird, twisted world, but I really like it. I'd actually like to see it as a show. It's got that kind of um, interesting vibe. Mythologically, it's very interesting. It reminds me a little bit of (laughs) Clash of the Titans or Wrath of the Titans, which sounds kind of weird, but it's got a very interesting world about how, you know, you've got like Cerberus, who is like... (laughs) hilariously like an untrained puppy forever (laughs) you know there's so many greek mythology that shows up there's artemis athena hades poseidon zeus hermes um charon oh god there's so many like there's um one of the muses there's rumor there's just a whole bunch of people that show up throughout and it's a very interesting way of being it. There's also like Hecate and um, Artemis and Apollo. Like all these people can show up. So it's a very, very, this very interesting world. And the Fury, Tiff, <laughs> I'm going to try and say this name. I'm going to get it wrong a lot because it's complicated for me. But Tysiphony, <laughs> I'm going to call her Sif. I know they call her something else. They call her like Tizy or something, but I'm calling her Sif because I can say it. So she's the Avenger of murder, and you know her sister does. Her sisters have other things: Magara and Electo, Magara, Meg. We're gonna call her Meg because they call Electo Alex. I'm like, cool. Okay, you can't see it. I just did like the the weird little like rock sign. Anyway, I was really impressed with the way they created. Sif. Like, she's very no nonsense, but has this kind of like spot for, as she puts it, so in this world, the souls that are that die are often left on the banks of the River Styx because they do not have anything to give to Charon to move across. Because as people have moved on from society, they, from the Greek society, they have forgotten gotten what you offer and as they put it as she puts it um the roman and the greek systems are pretty much the exact same they just have different names but that's about it but anyway so people have forgotten how to to give their dead something to help them cross to the other side and so there's a lot of lost souls so she plays with this guy who is bill hickok which is obviously supposed to be bill hitchcock which you know wild bill for those of us that are from America, if you don't know him, I highly suggest looking him up and I will leave some links below on that because it's a very interesting kind of dichotomy she's offering there. But she frequently wins money from him and she takes the feathers, she takes the money in her feathers and you know throws them below so people can get passage because it's not fair to be left dead but not able to transition beyond that. So I thought that was amazing. She's obviously got a very fair sense of reality and she's been away from human life for a while because of 
something she did that was very against the rules. She murdered somebody. Avenger of murder does not necessarily mean you can murder somebody, apparently. I like that kind of, like, very clear boundary line when I'm reading a mythology. And so she's, you know, summoned by the three head gods, you know. And they're like, hey, we need you to come here. <laughs> Yo, hello. So she shows up there after some prodding from Hermes. And it turns out her sister Alex was abducted in Vegas. And her sister Meg has no idea what happened. And they need some help. They've only got like about a week before it'll happen. You know, got to hurry up. Got to go, go, go. And she's like, okay, I don't want to go. And you said I could never go again. So what the ever loving hell. Turns out that the fates who also show up a lot in this are the ones that bound her basically what well, they have allowed her to go back because it's a, a case of not just family or need it's also because she is a fury she's the one that can do the most and no one has seen her so they don't know so it's a very interesting world they have set up so she gets sent back but she comes back with a partner one of the recently dead called shades in here is attached because he literally just died not you know a couple days before if not because there's been an abductions of people that look like alex and seth and meg and so they're like oh shit so they put it together and she goes with this with her partner who she's not very willing with he's an fbi agent and we all know i'm kind of like uh, about law enforcement and stuff but in this case it actually made sense so I was like okay so I was on board so we get there and I'm not really a fan of him but and his name Archer is rather appropriate for this I'm not gonna go with last name because it really doesn't matter so they kind of set up and they're in Vegas and they're trying to find answers and they're getting there and they're doing what they need to do and that's great cool rock on and they find out, again, about the looking alikes and stuff. But she has some people in Vegas. And they're staying in Caesar's Palace, which is just, <laughs> I love that idea of setting it there. Because there are big statues of various gods that they can actually use to communicate with. So, that's awesome. And there's, you know, like, areas they can walk. And she's just like, how am I walking in Vegas? And why are we never stopping when the portal lands? And good mile or two away from Caesar's Palace, which I feel you because that's a very dry heat. And if you're from an underworld full of coolness and not brightness, it can be a lot. And that's actually one thing that's draining her powers, even as she gets there. One of the best things, I have to talk about this, though. one of the best things that happens is, is when she gets there, like these guys in a car go and smack her ass and catcall her. And she gets so mad, she uses her like fury <laughs> boys and breaks all the windows in their car and they're like you and blah 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 and she's just like what and so archer's like trying to go fix it or whatever and he's like no no she's part of the fbi how could she do this and he's like yo you gotta chill she's like they slapped my ass and i'm like you know what for every for every woman in the world that has faced that good on you good job sif so they go through all of that, and then they get to the hotel. They set it up. They're in, like, the corporate suite because, of course, the gods have got expensive corporate suites, right? I mean, come on. Because, apparently, from what I gather, Vegas is, like, a pretty common place for them to go to vacation. Like, they show pictures of, like, Disneyland and all these other kind of places, but, but Vegas is a place to go because you can get lost in there. When gods are in our realm, in the mortal realm, I say our realm as they're real, but in the mortal realm, they lose a lot of their invulnerability. So it's easier to kill them and stuff like that. So they have to be aware of that. And, like, Archer is using basically a skin suit. <laughs> I guess it's the only way to put it. And it's very strange how to put it that way, but that's exactly what it is. And if something happens to it, the finger or the toe or the leg or whatever could fall off. So... That was questionable to read about sometimes. But it was very interesting because when you get there, you hear her. And there's this place called the Shadow Bar and the Caesar's Palace. And, you know, they're like, strange shit is happening here. Why is no one investigating it? But it turns out people were. And that's one reason that Archer is dead. 
spoiler, we don't know what exactly happens to Archer, or how it happens, because in five years, there's been no other book in this series, as far as I can tell, which kind of pisses me off, because I really like this series. <laughs> I'd like to read more. So, Barbara, if you're listening, please, more. Okay, so, I was like, this is awesome. The fact that Sif can sit there and look at this and go like, let me fix this shit. And she can't because there's a lot of complicated things that she has to deal with. And, you know, she ends up getting, like, like doused with a drug. And it's not great. And that's a whole other subplot line because that's how Meg was incapacitated and was dancing. And Meg doesn't dance. And neither does Sif, but Sif did. And she, like, auditioned. I guess, I guess she auditioned for the role. And so they go through all that, and so she's got a job there, like, the next night. She's hung over as fuck the next morning, because she had, like, three martinis, because she was, like, dying of thirst, and she thought the martinis were just, like, weird-tasting water. Turns out, not so much. So she's got this banging headache, and she gets, like, he gets her Gatorade, and, like, I, I appreciate the fact that Archer is somewhat of a smartass, but I appreciate the fact that he really seems to care about her, like, not in the, like, let's bone right away, even though that's what it, part of it is, but it's also just the fact that they're, he's like, oh, shit, I have to take care of you because you don't understand this world because it's been so long since you've been gone. It's been, like, 30 or 40 years at this point, so it's a whole thing. And then she, so he explains how he was investigating, and he's dead now. And she explains that, well, she was, <laughs> spoiler alert, this has got a true crime gross part. Just putting that out there. So she explains that she was in, I guess, jail, or unable to leave and do her furiness, because it wasn't like a huge job like it was in, like, you know, Greek times, but still she went and did her job. But apparently she um, went after John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, I was not expecting that. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that. And that's what kept this, this book from getting like a five star, honestly. I'll explain the rating breakdown in a little bit, but it's not high on that part. It's, it's a good, it's a good ding, okay? Because she talks about him and, I mean, go her for killing him, don't get me wrong, but... John Wayne Gacy was so, so fucked up. But I will say, I read the author's note at the end, and one thing I did appreciate is, is the author discusses that she didn't plan on having Gacy in the book. That was not her intent. But for whatever reason, it, it came into her head, and so she did some investigating, or I guess refresher, because a lot of us remember somewhat. I'm not old enough to remember when it happened, but I'm old enough to remember the outcome. And she said that, you know, she was really thinking about it. And she's like, I don't know. But then she was like, but also this allows for everyone who was a victim or a survivor or a family member or any of those people to have a say of saying, okay, look, this shit got handled. It was people that messed it up, but there was some universal justice, right? Because the gods bring his dumb ass back to life. But then he gets caught by the FBI and law enforcement and dead again. But anyway, the point being, there was a bit of resolution, and I think anyone that's been through something, sometimes it's nice to have that moment of resolution and say, I got you. Love that part of the book. Did not like the, did not like the option of choices on there. Like, I think that any other serial killer could have been put in there that she just made up, and it would have been great, but that was, it's a thing, and it's about child abductions and child rape and murder and all kinds of things, and I'm warning you now. <laughs> Consider this your high warning, because otherwise the book is great. But again, this... Hmm. So, you know, there there's a whole bunch of back and forth, and they do some investigating, and they go to some of the not-so-popular areas of Vegas, they do a bunch of stuff. There's, It's a complicated suspense part of it, and I like that because I, I like things that interweave and outerweave, and there's like several layers of this book that are just amazing, and I don't want to give them all away because I wasn't expecting everything. But there's, you know, there's this level of derision for people being cruel that I appreciate. And 
you know, when she gets there, it's fun because Cerberus shows back up as her pet. She ends up getting this sword because she didn't have one. So she gets a sword and the sword has a dragon on it because he got it from Excalibur. I mean, he like the book talks about real places in Vegas and I appreciate that because I've been in, in Excalibur. It was new at the time. So it's been um, 20 something years, but I went there. And so I understood the references and, you know, she, he gets this sword from Excalibur and it's got a dragon on it. And so once she basically purifies <laughs> the sword in Poseidon's pond and his like the you know, swimming pooly thing and Caesar's palace, it comes to life and her dragon comes to life. And so she's got puppy on one hand, dragon on the other. There's a whole bunch of other like random things that come through the the gate that's been opened and it's this whole like you know how are people coming from tartarus like what's going on you know this obviously this person came from there because they can feel it they can see it you know there's been a lot of destruction there's people that show up that you don't expect there is more talk of child death so on another villain i'm saying all the warnings for this book <laughs> all of them <laughs> when it comes to child stuff again not really a true crime person i was watching a little bit when we had netflix but generally i'll listen to a few podcasts but i'm not a true crime person like i i, I don't want to always know the the details because sometimes i think that i lose my humanity when i do but there are very clear boundaries and and there are of course goddesses and monsters that have done such things in the greek mythology and if you know any mythology you'll know who i'm talking about that show up there's also like i i can't say it it's like this giant ass bird like probably the size of a dinosaur right that shows up and like eats people well they it eats anything but especially like people and you know she has to battle that and, and deal with all of that um it's a lot of of mythologists kind of creeped in i like i said before i didn't really care for sif and archer's romance because it was a little bit fast and it just it didn't quite work i appreciated the lust aspect but i didn't believe in the love aspect if that makes sense maybe if there's a book two that i don't know about that exists somewhere but amazon says it doesn't so i don't know there's more to that i hope so because i'd like to have that worked out a little bit because he gets coronated in a way in the greek mythology because he becomes warning he becomes a demigod i'm talking about this because it's kind of obvious from the beginning that that the fates wanted him to be in this position so he becomes a demigod at the end and it, that kind of makes it a little bit easier for me since she's a goddess and he's a demigod so they'll be in the same world frame and you know she'll have a partner and stuff like that so okay all right there's a lot of steam in this one, though, by the way. There's a lot of, like, there's a couple of s sessions of sex that are, like, I didn't speed through them. What does that tell you? I really appreciated that. I thought it was great. You know, I, I loved Sif. Like, I, I think that she was amazing. And she was fun. And she was very methodical but not robotic like she had her things that she does she's she does all this kind of stuff and you know avenging murders is what she is for she's also like helping those lost souls she's trying to figure out what's going on she sees that a b c d happened and we got to figure out how to fix that she also talks about the uh gates of hell in turkey which is a very which is a real thing and well not the gates of hell but the opening of it in turkey you know because very old archaeologist we really gotta stop opening shit up guys i'm just saying they keep opening things from egypt all the time and i'd really like them for them to stop now anyway they open that up and so all that comes back but there's there's a very real like you can walk in this world and understand what's going on and you know the heroine makes it very easy to champion her without it being too much there's a lot of like even in the middle of all this there's some light-heartedness and apparently uh anino's got another character called stacy Hart. no stacy justice that's what it was stacy justice shows up and 
she has she's like a medium and it's a nice nice little way of like, getting interactions and knowing things and finding them out and there's a lot of really cool world building that I really 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 want to read more of I think that you know having the Furies in Vegas is kind of amazing I'd like to see where they go to next I appreciated the the connection to other gods and you know it wasn't just like you're not just in like a Greek mythology world they're all kind of tied together and they will work together if they need to there's conversations about that it's, it's this nice little pantheon of you can exist and not necessarily be what's expected and I love that I loved the world I like I have been trying to find people to talk about this book for a couple days because it was really freaking good i was not expecting it to be this good i was like it's a fury it's kind of got like a cheesy cover it's got like um you know that D D site where you can make your your, your characters it's kind of got that feel to it but that's what the cover reminded me a lot of those like you know posing things but what i really appreciated was with with sif is she's just herself no apologies no, you know, weird, not like other girls. She's got a temper and, you know, she knows it can get her in trouble, but it is what it is. And there there was something very relatable about that, because I don't know if you've ever noticed, but I will go off if I get angry sometimes. If you're on Twitter occasionally, I will start howling. But the point is, it's very fun. And I loved that. I had so much fun with that. And... Like I said, I, this is the first book I've read by this author, but I'm totally going to read more, especially if they're on Kindle Unlimited or if they're going to be on Scribe when I get that next month. I'm really hoping so because that just offers so much more information. My rating. So on the website, I've started using Cow, cow Pile, which is like... C-A-W-P-I-L-E and basically you just like break down the different elements of the book and I will link below to that and I will probably have my full review on there so I can give you kind of more of a breakdown but ultimately it's a four star book for me and that's it's really hard to get a four star for me lately so that's actually pretty high I would say probably like maybe a four four to four point two five it's very close. You know, the the Gacy thing really brought it down just because I was not expecting that and I don't really like child murderers in my books, especially my like, you know, urban fantasy, paranormal romance type stuff. But I was like, all right. Other than that though, I in the romance kind of like dinged it down a bit too. But other than that, I really liked this book. I think it's worth a Reading, if you can stomach the, again, I'm going to keep saying this, the Gacy stuff. It's definitely worth it. I found a lot of twists and turns, and I really appreciated some of the ideas and the way she has the mythology and how she has the gods interacting even in modern day. Not just the little gods, but like, you know, the major ones, <laughs> like the Brothers 3. So it's this really interesting world and, you know, how they talk about where their allegiances go is not necessarily who they're born into, but who they work with and stuff like that. Because she was not supposed to be in the underworld, but then she started working with Hades and it just clicked and it was home and she and her sisters are very similar. I like Meg and I like Alex. I think that as sisters, they're really good and they have a really strong bond. I also like when Rumor showed up because you, you don't expect that, right? But it really worked. And it was this great kind of, you know, Sif can't say a lie. She just can't. She, it's just not happening. And Rumor, that's all she does. And there's this bonding, there's a couple of bonding moments that really talk about that. And I appreciated that. And I, I liked seeing the different, like, not necessarily opposites, but the different sides of the same idea. So that was really cool. Parts of the ending were a little bit, mm, but again, overall, I loved it. I loved how the gods worked together and how they had their bloodlines and who, where they come from also matter in other ways. And I think that's really cool. I liked, I liked how 
the investigation went, I liked how, you know, it wasn't so cut and dry, and I liked how there was, like, layers, and it was just really cool to me. I was down with it. And I liked how the punishment, the ending was given. I'm a little curious about what can happen now that some things have been brought to life, or brought to light, I guess I should say, because they're not live, because it's not real, it's not that. So, overall, four. 4.25. I really love it. I think it's really cool. I will, again, put the breakdown probably in the show notes until I can get to the post. I'll probably post it later, this, like probably like three days after this goes up. I hate to do it that way, but I have to put up another one first, and that one I need to highlight for a little while longer. But keep checking Back to Damsel's podcast because, again, there's a ton of reviews that I'm putting up soon. And speaking of that, let us move on to the next part of this podcast episode. So I have two things to talk about. One, I have been reading Jennifer Saint's Adrony, I think that's how you say it, which is, of course, about the sister of the Minotaur and the daughter of the Princess of Crete. And I, it's very well done. If you've read, I'm not going to say this name right either. If you've read Esther Fre- Freisier, she wrote The Princesses of Myths about a decade or so ago, which was about like Helen of Troy, Cleopatra, etc. If you read her book, it's got a very similar vibe to that, and I think that's a really good thing because I loved those books. The Princesses of Myths were some of my favorites when I was reading it, and I was not a young adult at the time, by the way. I was like grown. I was like in my 20s, 30s at the time, but I loved it. I'm definitely going to give you that recommendation for Adrony. I'm going to talk about it on another episode, on the next episode at the end of this month. I'm also going to have a review up, but it's not due until May, so I'll probably put it up in around in mid to late April to give you a rundown, but I'm definitely all about it. I'm 20% in, and I love it. I I feel it. I can see it. I can I, I can feel the sun on my shoulders. I can feel, again, the Greek gods, which is why I'm putting it a little bit on this episode. I can't wait to talk about it a little bit more. I'm not done enough to get, to give you a big rundown, but it's definitely one I want to give you heads up, read it. I'm loving it. It's uh, I've got an advanced reader copy from Flatiron Books, which is amazing, and I was not expecting it because I, I love Greek mythology and mythology and general retellings. I've got a ton of them on my computer or not my computer on my kindle i call it all a computer because i use it like one half the time because that's where i put a lot of my mini reviews i write them up on my phone as if it was a computer i definitely want to give you guys that heads up so be on the lookout for it in may and i will talk about it more along the over the next couple months now i also want to talk about so i have never read penny reed's smarty pants romance and this is a part of that series. Now, I've tried to read Penny Reed, and I'm I'm sorry to say I, I couldn't get into her books. I know that kind of makes me stand out a little bit in Romance Landy, and I try to talk about the books I don't really can't get into, but that just happens to be one of them. But I was very curious because Susanna Nix has got one called Mad About You, and it's a, a, it's a second chance romance. We know I love those. But B... It's older heroine and heroines. They're like going to their 30-year reunion, which is totally cool to me because I turned 40 this year, guys. Like, I don't know where the hell the time went, but it went somewhere. So I like it when I can read heroes and heroines that are my age or a little bit older because, you know, life doesn't stop just because you're not 25 or 30 anymore. And so I love that. And I really liked this book. Mad About You is a play because she owns a yarn store. Mad About You. And I love the the way that her store is very much a part of her. And it it identifies who she is and what she is and what she's doing. And it's so cool. Dawn, sometimes I had some issues with her. But in general, I loved her tenacity and her friendship with Angie. So (laughs) I wrote this in my review, which I will link below because I'm going to have it posted in a minute. Not a minute. As soon as I, you know, code it because I I really hate coding, guys. That's my least favorite part about putting on a website. Anyway, especially because I'm using WordPress. And if you know anything about WordPress, you know, it can be a pain in the ass to code sometimes if they break it every couple days. Anyway, 
I, I liked the fact that, so Dawn <laughs> was interesting. Dawn kind of reminded me of Andy from Pretty in Pink, not so much from the wrong side of the tracks because she wasn't, but just her lack of confidence uh, to be with, you know, the more popular people, right? So that insecurity reminded me of that. But her friend Angie, oddly enough, even though she was a former goth, reminded me a lot, a lot of Annie Potts' character in Pretty in Pink. I, I was like, yeah, no, I got it. I actually mentioned this in my review. So she had a like, she had that kind of vibe that like, all right, I got you. I love that friendship. That friendship was like, that made the, the numbers go up so high because it was so obvious they'd been friends for 30 something years and they weren't going to stop. And I was like, hell yes. I, you guys know I love a good friendship circle. Like, that's one thing that was missing from Fury Rising, honestly, was some of the friendship circles, but they were kind of, like, building one up, so I was down with it. But in this one, it's very clear, you know, how they go along. And Dawn was brave because she, like, got a divorce because she just wasn't happy in her marriage. It wasn't a bad marriage. It wasn't anything else. It just wasn't a good marriage, and she was aware of that. And I think that is so important to people. So... I, I liked her. I liked that she was so passionate about her job, about teaching people how to knit and crochet. I don't have the patience for it. So if you can do it, hell yeah. And I will also say that I didn't like the male lead. I did not like Mike like at all. He was very insecure, judgmental, petty, snobby, not my kind of a guy at all. But there are times when he's very very good to dawn and it's when she needs it the most and that matters to me i'm going to say here is a heads up warning there is a warning for infertility and cancer and this book i want to give it loudly and and say it quite clearly because it's not an easy topic as a woman but the way it's the way it is discussed in this book isn't bad i mean i think i would do some things different but it isn't bad so i want to give that as a heads up this was also an advanced reader copy by Susanna nick she like you know put it out there on instagram and i was like oh sure i'll read this i love it i mean like i told you i love second chances and i love like older heroines and and like not older but like older than the average you know like 20 year olds 25 year olds so i loved it i was down for it <laughs> we'll put it that way i really enjoyed the book I have got my review up on the website and you can see my total scoring, but I gave it three stars, but it was a very high three star. It was almost a four star. Honestly, if Mike had been slightly different, it would have been easily been a four star. And again, it's really hard to get five stars from me. So to get like a four star is actually really high. So I love that. I, you know, I'm going to recommend this book. And I'm going to say, you know, thank you for letting me read it to Smarty Pants and to Susanna Nix. I, it releases on March 16th. When this goes up, it'll be either releasing that day or the next day. I'm not entirely sure. But I really am excited to read more of, of Nix's work. And that's not always easy for me to say, but I'm de definitely down for it. So go check it out. It's set in Chicago, too, and it actually, like, it doesn't really talk about Chicago that much, but it does, and I like the fact that it's, like, set in, like, a neighborhood. I like it when big cities have neighborhood settings because, you know, I grew up in Atlanta, and that's a very, like, what you find in, say, I don't know, Bankhead is not what you're necessarily going to find in the old Fourth Ward or what you're going to find in over in, like, I don't know the Toco Hills neighborhood, right? Like, they're very different. And I, I like the fact that, you know, this is very clearly a community area because of the way that the characters are interacting and the way the upstairs and downstairs and, you know, all these people businesses work together. So it really works, and I, I like that. So definitely going to tell you to go read that. That means that I have got two, two highly recommended books on this episode, which is not always possible. I still haven't done my my February wrap up on YouTube yet. Sorry, it's, we've had really bad weather here. Like, I mean, really bad. 
we had hail a couple of days ago, like three or four days ago, and we've had like 20 something degree winds for like the past three or four days. So today is the first pretty day we've had. So I haven't had time to record. I'm going to do that soon. I figured you want to see me on my face on the TV. So we'll see how that goes soon. But be on the lookout. And of course, as I mentioned before, follow me everywhere on Damsel's podcast. Go to the website for the reviews. You can find my link tree as well because I'm all over the place. Please rate and review this podcast if you would like. I would really appreciate it because it actually does help. And I know that everyone says that, but truly it does. Because I want to find out more. Like, I want you guys to, to, to interact with me more. And so that's one way of doing it. I appreciate it when you guys are on Twitter talking. And I appreciate it when you guys give me the, the push to do another episode. And you guys have no idea how much that means to me. I also celebrated my one year anniversary earlier this month, so I wanted to say to my dear editor and amazing husband, I love you and it's been a hell of a year, but it's been an amazing year. Okay guys, (laughs) I'll talk to you next time. Bye. (laughs) 